sponsored by Dow Infinity. to Thinking Tackle and in this episode we have literally been transported back in time. This idyllic lake called Green Acres near Peterborough has only been fished five times since the carp were put in here. There's 120 fish here to almost 40 pounds and I'm told as well they're absolute stunners. I've got my old mate Steve Broad with me as well and most importantly a couple of competition winners from Angling Times that have actually won a competition to appear on the show. So we're going to talk baiting up, we're going to talk feature finding, we're going to talk rigs, absolutely everything they need to know to hone their angling. Well, it's taken a couple of hours to get it right, but it is bang on right now, mate, isn't it? Spot on, yeah. That was a joy to see you, to see that lead hit the bottom and you see the look on, that's it, that's on the spot. That was, that was absolutely brilliant. So the, the, I think it's important to, to point out that we've taken a marker float out of the way, haven't mm. we? So, yeah. Because it, that's the easiest thing to catch around. If you've got a crosswind, trying to cast at the marker, the line goes round it, snare up and you put good everything night. in yeah. so yeah so that that was really good they're both bang on the money those two we've marked the line with a little bit of foil tape which you can just like roll into a little cigar shape yeah so it doesn't catch so once we slacken off the, that tape will move up the rod a little bit the mm -hmm. line will slacken right down but the most important thing we've got the distance mark so if you yep. get a bite in the night we can clip it up at that same range again and get you back exactly on, on the, the money spot. so uh that was that was bang on mate really well done um, i think you should get the uh Get the other rod out. With pleasure. And how about that for a start to the session? Pleased, mate? Ecstatic, mate. Fantastic. That's wicked, isn't it? Perfectly clean fish um, on the rod in the margins, wasn't it? Yeah, one right in close. Excellent. So we're going to stick with that rod in close. Obviously, we're going to put the two further out, as we've shown you already. And once we've got this fella back, we're going to have a look at bait. Well, unusually for me, I'm fishing three completely different spots, um, basically because there are so many options in this swim, and also because there's no real big clear area to fish to. I've had a cast around with a marker float, and I can't find anything that feels like gravel. It's just different kinds of weed absolutely everywhere. So I'm choosing to fish with a throwing stick this time, and just spread boilies, 
all over the, the far part of the swim. My marker float that's probably two thirds of the way across is, is feeling down into some silkweed that's probably that much off the bottom. So I'm going to fish a fairly long hook link, spray boilies all over that area and get the fish picking them up in the weed. The long rod is right over the other side where I've seen fish scooting up and down that far margin when it was warm earlier on perfect area to have a bait again very weedy out there so I'm going to fish a pop-up on that rod and then the third rod is going to go literally just down there under the tree in front of me um, the fish are, have been coming up and down here on the surface they're not pressured at all so I'm going to choose that as my three spots to start off with and then I'm going to move more rods to one area if one starts to produce more bites so let's get some bait in I've put about two kilos of boilies in already and uh, those fish are straight onto it they've actually been bubbling up while I've uh, while I've been messing about getting some rigs done um, I'm putting out four or five at a time over to that far margin and then I'm just going to put another handful around the marker float and then I'm going to get the rigs in because the fish have had a way I've had a while of free food so uh, we're going to get the rods out and hopefully Try and get a few bites. Come on, Nathan. Great swim. Mm -hmm. Big fallen tree to the right. Lots of weed over the back, but we've seen fish short, so we don't want to spook them with a spod rod. What we're going to do is just get your rod here. Mm -hmm. We've got a light little lead on it. Just cast it out here short, mate, where okay. the fish have been showing. Feel that lead down. Just find out what's on the bottom out there. Ready? Remember, just trap that line as it goes down. Feel the bottom as you okay. go down. Right, let's just pull back and pull back. Oh, that doesn't feel too bad. We'll just clip that up now. Bang okay. that straight in the clip because we'll find find the distance. You got that little fiddly fella? Like little that. fingers and thumbs, mate. That's it. Uh, that. That's there perfect. Now spin it back in quickly, mate. Pick it up because you don't want it to pick up any extra weed as it comes into the margin. Okay. You swing that back in. Whoa. You look at that. Only little bits of weed, nothing to worry about, we'll get away with that. Now we're ready to go and clip this up with a spod rod. Okay. There you go, mate. Right, as you can see, what we've got is both these rods are clipped up now. How we did it was cast the fishing rod out first, pulled along, found a clear spot, and put the line in the clip. Then we went up onto the flat bank behind us, we pushed a bank stick in, wrapped the rig round it, and then we put the spot in exactly the same place on the bank stick, walked slowly backwards, Nathan and I, side by side, until that hit its clip, which meant that we can put this in its clip there. So both of these are now exactly the same distance that we can cast. Now all we need to do is put a little bit of bait in. Here we are, look at this. First fish from a new lake, absolutely brilliant. And just look at him. What a fantastic creature, dark, all those lovely oranges and reds, fantastic scale pattern, nice big broad back and head. That's what carp fishing's about, catching these fellas. Here you go, one for the book. 16 and a half, taking over the spot mix that Danny helped me with. Beautiful take, beautiful fish, they're chuffed. There's a 20 pound four off of the margin rod. Fantastic take. <laughs> sure the boys will agree with me. Absolutely roared off. Had me all the way over the swim, but dead chuffed. Brilliant fish. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dow Infinity. Well, it is um, quarter to six in the morning. Um, I lost one about half an hour ago, unfortunately, um, on my long rod out by the far margin over there. Took me for a huge wee bid, probably ran 20 yards, the fish was boiling up 20 yards away from where the line was hitting the water. Managed to get it back for all of that, you know, going eh, 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 back through and uh, cleared the weed, started to feel the fish, fish kited along the surface and was just kiting around the corner, kiting around the corner and then come off and when I've wound it in the hook rather than being like that is like that um, so I've swapped over to a much thicker wire gauge hook 
Um, the good news is, obviously it's not nice losing the fish, but the good news is I can get a bite on that spot because it is hellishly weedy over there and um, you know, I really didn't think the bait was presented properly. So to get a bite means it was presented properly. So I've whacked the rod back out there again, put a couple of hundred boilies around it and uh, we'll see what happens during the day. The weather looked like it was going to be a scorcher but um, the clouds are coming in now and uh, it looks like it's going to be a good day for a few bites um, during the day so uh, hopefully we'll get a few more um, Tom's not had any more next door um, he's ended up with uh, with three fish for yesterday up until darkness um, I don't know about the other boys I haven't spoken to them yet but um, I'm sure you'll be hearing from them later on well the action is now coming thick and fast um, I've got to pay attention to what I'm doing because there's a lot of weed out there as we've said and uh, the lead has come off and the fish is up in the water very quickly in the fight. This is on the long rod again. Um, and it just makes so much difference when you're playing fish in these conditions. Um, so we're gonna get this fella, fella in. Hopefully he's gonna go in the net. And uh, then we're gonna go down and see Steve and Nathan because uh, Steve's fishing situation is uh, pretty unique in that it's very, very weedy and he's fishing at very close range. So we're gonna look at how he's tackling that sort of situation because a lot of people wouldn't actually fish the swim that Steve is in because it's too confined and it's too weedy um, but uh, as you've seen he's already had one I know he had a 15 pounder last night as well or yesterday evening he's probably had more I haven't had a chance to go down and see him yet but um, we're going to talk rigs with Steve and just a general approach as well. Got him! Wicked, excellent. And look at that, what a stunning, stunning common carp. 18 and a half pounds, again, like an absolute wood carving. The clear water here and the weed is turning these fish as dark as they can get. Just a joy to catch every single one. So let's get this fella back and then go and see Steve in his swim. Well, here we are, Dave. Uh, looks a bit daunting, doesn't it? It certainly does. A uh, little reminiscent of a football field rather than a fishing swim, <laughs> but we have the technology to tackle it, mate. Don't worry. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple of rigs here. This is the first one. This is a standard sort of bottom bait rig that I'd fish in weed. Okay. Dead simple. It's a length of tube, normal dark green tube to match mm -hmm. the weed, and it's got a couple of blobs of putty on it. Okay. And then actually we move down here to the sort of lead end this is the bit that does all the work for us and what we've actually got here is a clip and if you pull it all apart you can see that it's all locked in place right and that ensures that when the fish picks up the rig the lead dumps I every see. time it's gone that's it okay. just the hook link end again it's a standard rig I've, I've fished it a little bit longer than i would do normally and we've got a quick change clip on is that because of the weed what the length yeah yeah no <laughs> We're fishing it long just so that you can sit on things, right. balance. We've got a little bit of putty in the middle just to help it sit right. Mm -hmm. And to finish all that off, we put a stick on. Okay. And we'd actually pull the stick through with the hoop link so and that, just mask the hoop point. Right, so that prevents it from sticking in any weed. That's exactly right, mate, exactly right. So that's the nice, simple bottom bait rig. Right. And then we've got something a bit more special here. This is the oh so famous chod rig. Right. Never seen one before. No, it looks a bit weird and wonderful, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. <laughs> right, what you've got is a leader, helicopter style. And as you can see, that's why it's called a helicopter. Right. Yep. Yep. So we've got a very light lead, the lightest lead we can get away with on the bottom. This hoop link, which we'll talk about in a second, sliding up it. That's right. And then we've actually got a stop on the leader. And this stops the hoop link. Yeah? Right. If you notice, that, that can slide. And we just ever so gently push it on there. And so the slightest movement, it's off, it's gone. And it can pull off the leader. So that, in the event of something terrible happening, that's safe. So we just jam that on. Just there. 
so the whole thing comes apart yeah. in case of a breakage or anything like that. Absolutely spot on, mate, 101%. So now we come to the clever bit, this little tiny short hoop link. That all looks a bit odd, doesn't it, that? Yeah, it does, rather. Well, it actually sits like that on the bottom. So when we cast in, the lead hits the bottom, we tighten down, and it ever so gently comes to rest on the lake bed like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. And that means that bait's always visible. Right. Always visible. So all we've got is a ring swivel, some special uh, line that helps. See this very aggressive shape to it? I see, yeah. So yeah. It, so that's with the uh, bend of the shank. Yeah, that's it. And at that aggressive angle helps hook in. Now we've got a purpose designed hook right. that, as you can see, the eye's bent out, mm -hmm. which is unusual. Most hooks, the eye bends in. Right, yeah. Going around a nice beak point. And then we've got this little ring on a D. And that just helps that, that bait. It sits correctly while in the water. When the fish picks it up, it gets out of the way Pops and the hook can do its job. So, just, yeah. yeah. And finally, we've got a very, very, very buoyant bait. Mm -hmm. This rig works on the fact that that bait's buoyant right. and needs to stay buoyant. So we've got nice, bright, boily, nice pop up visible. boily. Yeah. And then we've got a little tiny bit just on the top, just to give it that little extra bit so it stays buoyant okay. for longer. Right. And that's it, mate. Super. These are the rigs. This is all we need for tackling this swim in the weed. So this is the rig to use in the weed. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, let's go. Well, a surprise take in the middle of the day um, under the heat of the sun. And uh, it's another fish on a combination of hook baits, a bottom bait and a pop-up. Uh, I think it's only a small carp actually, but what we're going to look at now is, is how to make your own hook baits because uh, I genuinely believe they give you a lot more bites and uh, it's very, very easy to do, a lot easier than most people think. So we're going to land this fella and then we're going to show you how to make your own hook baits. Come on fella, in you come. Gotcha. Excellent. And how about that for a miniature 40 pounder? Look at the shoulders on that fella. Goes 15 pounds. I would have given it 12 pounds if I hadn't weighed it. And those two fantastic rows of scales, that's making it really recognizable. So when he's bigger in a few years time, hopefully I'll get to catch him again. So we'll get this fella back and we'll look at those homemade hook baits. I think one of the major differences between anglers like Tom, who've been doing it a little while, really keen and everything, and, and anglers like myself, who've been fishing a long time, is the understanding of hook baits and, and how to make them. And uh, believe you me, mate, if you get into it, it will catch you so many fish. And there is nothing better than catching one on a bait you've made yourself, and okay. no one else knows what's in it, <laughs> yeah. and everything else. It, it's just a wonderful <laughs> feeling. So to talk you through, I've got three different types here. Basically, this, this is a pop-up version of, of the bait that I happen to be using on this particular session, which is the cell. Mm -hmm. I've also used New Grange as well. Um, but very, very easy to make, and I make everything on the bank, yeah? So I start off with a couple of egg whites. I don't use the yolks because there's a lot of fat in the yolk, yeah. and basically it stops them going hard as quickly. And I want to boil these as little as possible. If you think when you're making a bait, the longer you boil it for, the more goodness you're taking out of it. Got you. Yeah? Yeah. So basically, a couple of egg whites, just a bulk liquid goes in there that goes with a normal base mix and then uh, a little bit of Polaris, just put, which is like a pop-up mix. So when you mix it in with it, the whole bit of dough will float from the gotcha. word go, yeah? So that one that I lovingly made that you've just ruined there, yeah, yeah that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's Polaris all, all, all the way through it. There's nothing that's, else in it. That's the goodness. That's the goodness, yeah. So basically I've made two lots in the same batch, I've made round ones which I would fish because I'm feeding with round boilies, then I'd put a round one on the end, yeah. you know, and that's what I've caught the fish on here. And then those little ones that I've just squeezed into a little funny odd shape, that's if I'm chopping my bait up and I'm spotting like you, yeah. then I'm basically, rather than making a round one and then cutting all the round bits off it, if you're gonna make them yourself, you can just squeeze them together and form like a chop. So it looks similar to what you can you're get, feeding. You can get yeah? quite eventful with it. You can, you can, you can, you know, if you want to make little six mil ones and mm. fish two of them on a hair, do it. Yeah. You know, and what I find is when you're making them, you start off with the small ones, mm. by the end of it, you get so bored, <laughs> yeah. they get bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? So that's what I'd recommend do. But I mean, a, a two egg white mix 
has about 20 mil of the liquid in it, that'll probably last you two seasons. Yeah. And it'll probably take you an hour to make it on the bank, you know? And I, you know, because we're all sitting there behind motionless rods a lot of the time, especially mm. in the winter, I make the mixes, you know, at that time of the year, and it lasts me for like two seasons. I mean, the ones I've been using until I made these in this session, these new Grange ones there, you can see there's loads of different shapes in that. I made them a couple of years ago. I have caught hundreds of carp on yeah. that batch, you know? And every one of them, you think, that's a carp. That's, that's a, a carp. carp. That's a carp. And that, you know, it, it is a little bit time consuming, but if every one of them's a fish, it's worth it, you know? Yeah, most definitely. So this one, slightly different. I've started off by putting the sinking base mix in yeah. rather than the Polaris, yeah? Mm -hmm. So basically I'm making a slow sinker. Start off with a sinking base mix, get to like a, a sticky, horrible mess, yeah. and then start putting the, the pop-up mix in. Yeah, and then you end up, because you're combining the two, you end up with a slow sinker. And you can actually, you can either roll a, a little bit into a ball, drop it in water and see how buoyant it is. Yeah. Or you could drop the whole thing in the water and it would show you the buoyancy. Gotcha. So if you find that, it, say you've made it slightly too buoyant, you can dip the whole lot in water, knead it up again, make it soft, mm. and add more of the sinking mix so that you get just the right buoyancy. So worth mucking about with. And then these little fellas, you're not breaking one of these, mate. These, <laughs> they, the special boys. These are like gold dust. They, inside each one of them, you've got a cork ball. Yeah. So you've already got a very, it's a slow sinking base mix, and then you've got a cork ball inside it as well, so it makes it very, very buoyant. And that's for the chod rig. Yeah. Because you want a really super buoyant bait. There's nothing worse, you've got a chod rig, and as your bait takes water on, it slowly does that. You're losing the effectiveness of the chod rig. So they're the three that I've made today, but just to show you a couple of others, have a little whiff of those. That's gorgeous, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. That's a real tangy, fruity smell. And really, if you're gonna make fruity ones, it's only limited by your imagination. So you find some old flavours and whatever, you put them in there. A lot of them put went into that little pot, I guess, then. But they're all cork balls. Every single one of them has got a cork ball. That took me all day to make them, but Ouch. every single one of them is a bite. Every single one's a carp, you know, that's, that's the way to think so about it. the odd 40-pounder swimming around in that little There's guy. loads of 40-pounders <laughs> swimming around in there, mate. So, so that's basically how to do it. It is very, very simplistic, doesn't cost a lot of money. And uh, I'm certainly on places like this where it is, a, is very weedy mm. and you need to have different buoyancies of hook baits. I think it's well worth it. It's now the middle of the afternoon um, and I've had five chances out on the, the middle rod and the long rod, which are both fished sort of on the other side of the lake. The close rod, which to be honest, I spe expected to go more than any of the others, hasn't produced a bite. So I'm not happy with that. I've made up a new bait mix and I'm going to chuck that in to try and draw some fish into this area because it really should do a bite. So I'm going to use the lead just as a marker with no rig on. I'm literally just underarming it, still clipped up. That's it. Donk on the bottom. So the splash that we've created is going to be our marker. And basically in here I've got pellets, um, some party mix, some ground bait just to stiffen it up, um, salt and tuna as normal, just as I'd put in my spod mix. And I've made this quite sloppy, so as it hits, you see that one's broken up, as it hits the surface, it's going to break up, and I'm not going to end up with a load of balls on the bottom, I'm going to end up with a nice big spread of bait. Because what I'm trying to do is any fish travelling down that, oh, hit the tree again, down that margin, I'm trying to basically draw those fish onto the bait here. And uh, this stuff, I baited up with pellets last night, and uh, it didn't produce anything. The rig was lovely and clean when I wound it in. So this is uh, a little bit more active, a little bit more attractive, and hopefully it's gonna start producing on this rod as well. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dow Infinity. Here we are, fantastic common, 19 pounds, real scrapper, proper brawler. It's a little bit sad though, poor old Nathan's next door, not had a fish yet, so we better nip round and do something about it. Well, 
Well, I went to see Nathan this morning and he'd had a grueler of an evening, no fish at all, so we decided we'd come out stalking. And we've only been here 10 minutes and we got a chance off the top and look at this cracking fish. Please, son. Lovely, <laughs> really nice fish. Well, we well need to pleased. get in now, we need to weigh him and deal with him and then we're going to crack on and see if we can get some more. But uh, business first, cameras are weighing, let's get on with it, eh? Super. Slip him in there, Nate. Right, the last f fish we caught was off the top and we just used floating dog biscuits like these. Because it was such a sunny day, Nathan and I walked from where we were fishing, came down this bottom end, didn't we, mate? Oh. And there was fish everywhere, just loads of them bow waving around on the top, so catapulted a few of these out, one pair of lips, two pairs of lips, and they were going for it, they were going yeah. for it. So, cast out to them, gently eased it back, boom. Had it. Over to you then, mate. Had it, mate. 20, 20 pounds, six ounce, superb fish, great colour. And what more can you ask for? A day like this, great. So we've done a little bit of surface fishing and, and managed to sneak one out, Nathan's first fish. What we're going to do next is I've spotted a little chance down in the corner. So instead of fishing off the top, this time we're just going to fish off the bottom. And it's simple. Same rig Nathan's been fishing with all night. Just a basic rig with a little tiny PVA bag of pellets. And we're just going to sneak down there in the edge really gently, SAS stuff, hands and knees, crawl in, pop it down and hopefully Hopefully we'll catch one. Another big one for now. Fingers Are you crossed. ready for this one, mate? Yeah, let's right, go. Right, let's go and have a dabble, mate. Superb. Well, mate, for all the SAS stuff, I think they, I think they've sussed us. I think they've beat us today. Oh dear. Well, right, come on, reel in, mate. Let's go and find some others. Come on, mate. <sighs> Can't win them all, fella. Oh dear. Maybe another day. Yeah, come on, mate. Let's go and search some other ones. Go on, fella. Well, my third bite of the morning. Um, it's pretty much ready for netting. This is off the uh, the middle rod. Um, I've lost one on the uh, on the long rods, and I've also caught one on the long rod, which we've got in the sling in the swim next door um, to show you an absolutely stunning uh, 27 and a half pounder. This one looks like a mid double, um, and the nice thing is, in spite of the weed, um, I'm getting bites. So uh, once we've got these fellas in, we're going to show you the rigs that we've caught them on. Come on. Yes, got him. Oh, Paka, wicked. Look at that. 19 pounds, four ounces, an absolute wood carving. They do not get any better than this. Um, and testament to Dave, who's uh, now running the fishery. He's put these fish in over the last few years and they're doing fabulously well and just look how beautiful they are. Just stunning, absolutely stunning and we've still got one bigger to show you as well. Look at that, 27 and a half pounds of just beautiful, beautiful mirror carp. Look at the shoulders on it. It's gonna be a real big fish this one day. Um, this one was taken on a pop-up, just fished on the long rod out by that far bank there with a, a soft coated hook link. So what we're gonna look at now is the rigs that I've been catching these fish on and showing you exactly how to tie them. Wicked. So this is how my day started, not very well at all. Um, size six wide gape hook opened up. 
um, got the fish two thirds of the way in um, and then it came off. Um, obviously this had happened when the fish was charging through the weed and I was pulling it back the other way. So basically I changed it round to exactly the same rig but just with a thicker wire hook. Um, it's a straight pointed hook rather than a beak pointed hook but uh, I don't think that's a major problem because of the shape, a very short shank um, which does seem to catch hold well. Um, and then the next bite the fish went in the net and that happened to be the 27 pounder and it was absolutely nailed. And just to talk you through that one, very very simplistic rig, just tied the hook on with my favourite whipping knot but before I've done that I put a little tungsten hook link sinker onto the braided part of the hook link, I've stripped a little bit back from the coated braid, slid that on and then gone through the eye of the hook and tied my favourite whipping knot um, and then the shrink tube's gone on after that because the shrink tube is a large bore I can slide it over the, um, the tungsten sinker over the eye of the hook and that just helps it to sit over pretty much as, as it is there so it's just cocked like a claw ready to grab the bottom lip of the fish one of my homemade pop-ups um, this one is a, is a bait called New Grange um, but basically anything fished out over the top of those boilies that I'm sticking out would work um, and then round that tungsten sinker, which is a little bit heavy anyway, I've added some more rig putty and the, the pop-up will just sink nice and slowly. And then moving down the hook link, I've got probably a, I don't know, eight to 10 inch coated braided hook link. And then I've got a bit of putty in the middle, so it all settles nicely into the weed out there. And then just a teardrop shaped loop on the other end, which enables me to take the hook link on and off very quickly. And then moving on to the lead system, I'm just clipping that hook link on there. Normally I'd sheave that up with a, a three millimeter silicon sleeve. Um, that just enables me to take the hook link on and off. I'm not fishing a stick in this situation. Very, very important actually in this kind of condition when there's lots of weed out there. I'm putting a couple of bits of dissolvable foam, just licking them, squeezing around the hook. That's holding everything bolt upright off the bottom as it hits the bottom. The foam then dissolves and it flutters down amongst the weed. And then because it's weedy, I'm using a leg clip system. I just take that off. This one's got a swivel running all the way through the middle of it and that means there's no way that swivel can pull out so the lead has to come off. And I'm actually using a, a pear shaped lead on this occasion because it helps me to feel the lead hit the bottom because there's so much touch in there. It just helps with that feeling and I'm casting around and feeling for a bit of shallower weed because there is weed all over this swim, no clear spots whatsoever. To neaten it all up and stop the lead coming off too easily, rubber connector and then simple rig tubing on there, a couple of bits of rig putty on it just to hold it all nice and down in the weed as much as we possibly can. It's all colour green to match the weed. So that's my lead system. I'll show you my, my alternative hooking arrangement. I've got like what's called a snowman set up there. So you've got a pop-up boilie with a bottom bait underneath it. So that will sink, if I just put that in my hand, that will just sink down sort of like that, sitting like that. So it's a little bit lighter than a bottom bait, a bit easier for the fish to see sitting in the weed and should fly up in their mouth a bit easier. I've had a bite on this one. Again, same sort of pattern of hook, a heavier wire gauge, same sort of coated hook link and a bit of putty to hold it down. And the other version, is tied up sort of KD style. So you're doing the knotless knot as normal. After a couple of turns, you pull the hair out the way, carry on turning, so the hair's basically exiting the hook near the eye. And with a very, very slow sinking snowman set up like that, that sort of sits like that on the bottom, flies up in their mouth really easily, and that will get you loads of bites. A very, very effective way of fishing that, and uh, I'd be happy to fish that in the silkweed especially using a couple of bits of foam. You know, it's all just gonna settle down nicely into the weed and where they're rooting around for those boilies that I've put out, they're gonna pick that up easily. So they're the rigs that I'm using in this situation. If you haven't got any clear spots in your swim, that's what I recommend. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dow Infinity. 
getting towards the end of the second day now. The sun's dropping down. It looks more likely that we're going to get a bite on the bottom again. I've actually had to wind in today and go up the local tackle shop and get some more boilies because I've virtually run out. So what I've done is spread probably half a kilo to a kilo over those two longer rods. I'm going to drop a few more baits in now and hopefully draw the fish back into the area. I didn't catch anything last night, but I reckon tonight might be different because those spots are now rocking. So here we are in my swim. Didn't go quite as planned last night. Didn't have no fish. Um, so we're just trying a different method today. Just seen a lot of fish bubbling up down in the margins here. So we've put like two kilos of pellet down there and we're using a pop-up um, squid scope X. And straight out in front of us, put about two kilos of uh, boilies and we're using the chod rig. So gonna give that a try tonight. Hopefully have some fish through the evening. Well, what a hectic night. Seven fish to 25 pound, really great. Just brilliant fun. And then today, I spent most of the time creeping under bushes, trying to get Nathan a fish, desperate to get him some action. And we got it. A 20 pounder off the top. I mean, how good's that? I'm going to carry on baiting up now, and hopefully things will be as busy. Hi, will you join me at the end of day two, and a very lovely afternoon it is, uh, while I do my Mr. Fairbrass bits of camera. Um, going through some of my rigs that hopefully are going to see me with a bit of luck this evening and have a bit more to talk to you tomorrow. Um, I spoke to Danny about all the things I'm doing, he says I'm spot on, so there's nothing I'm doing wrong particularly, it's just getting them fish in my swim, keeping them there, and before too long I should get a couple of bites, and hopefully one of those elusive 30s will uh, grace the bank and I'll have something to show for you tomorrow. There's a little spot down here, mate. Right. Just want to be careful. There's a big gap in the tree line, so we don't want to be skylighted against yeah. it. But it's at the bottom of a really steep bank, so we've just got to be careful. But just hold on one sec. You just come and look here. Look at those little babies. Oh, Me and Nathan nice. have been dead lucky. We've just found another little corner with some fish feeding. This is our just last chance before the evening, just before we go back to a sims. So we're going to sneak down there. Hold on a sec. Steady on, Nath. Just drop that down, mate. Look, just here. Be ever so careful. Just swing this in. Drop it on. And we'll put him down. Right. We'll just swing this out. You ready, mate? It looks close, but that's where they are. Okay. Right, just sort all this out, mate. There we are, nice flat line. Put the rod like that. A little bit slacker. There you are, that's our bite along. Okay. Right, we'll just sit back a little bit. Don't want to sit on top of them, and at least we can have a chat. Okay. Go on, mate. It's a big fish, Nath. Got to get this under control. Keep pumping back. Put your finger on that spool when you're pumping. That's it. Now dip the rod tip again. That's it, mate. Finger on the spool, just nice and steady. No sudden movement, just nice and steady. It's a big fish, mate. Seen Wallying about, you've got a big lump of weed on the line. We've got to be careful about our big lump of weed. Okay. It's a big old fish, mate, so. Just take your time, take your time. Keep pumping him. He'll take line when he wants to. Keep drawing him in, mate, keep pumping. Don't, don't give him a moment to think about it. We want this fella in the net. Don't let him think about anything. You just keep bringing him. You just keep bringing it. That's it. See how the weed's round his head now? Yeah, stop. Come on, don't, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Just keep going, keep going. Come on. Towards me, Nathan, towards me. Come on, mate. Come on. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Come on. That was one. <laughs> Look at that, mate. It's a nice, nice fish. That is another lump, mate. I think. Uh, 
if it's not 20, it's not very far off, mate. Okay. Oh no, sorry, mate. He's a... I think she has been spawning. Oh. For cracking fish, nice mate. Nice fish. Well, what a last gas fish. Just before we were about to go back to the swims for the night, Nathan's managed to just fool another one. 17 pound eight from under a little tiny bush. Great, what do you reckon, mate? It's been hard work, but another cracking fish to end the evening. Super. Come on, let's slip him back, mate. We've got rods to yeah. get out. Well, it's getting very near to darkness on uh, the second night, and after putting in a couple of kilos of boilies, the um, the banker rod, as it were, the long rod, has roared off, and uh, we've already seen this one. We know it's a decent common. As you can see, there's loads of weed on the line, as always, which doesn't make it easy, but I've dumped the lead, um, and it's just a case of just leading him in. Oh, he's going mad now. Problem is, I've got a lot of weed right under my feet here, and if he gets his head in it, it can uh, make it hard work. Plus, the other lines, it's very difficult to uh, keep the, the other lines on the bottom. So, uh, it's very easy for the fish to get through them. I'm trying to keep it away from the other line as well. So I don't ruin that for the night. Ooh. It's quite a heavy fish, this one. It's a good, good 20. Come on, come to Papa, right, stick that night net right out, young Tom. Get in the net. Got him, good skills, that man. Excellent. <laughs> Top result, absolutely brilliant. Right lads, we're nearing the end of our session. Um, we're very pleased that they've caught, aren't we? <laughs> oh, very yeah. pleased that, you, that they've both caught. What would you say that, you, that you've got out of it more than anything else? I think uh, I've found feathering my uh, line down and feeling what's on the actual bottom and the new chod rig that I've never used before. I'll be right. definitely taking that back to my waters. Some of the waters that I fish are quite weedy, so I'll be definitely yeah, trying that, that again. Yeah. Bang on for that. And that feathering down, it's something we take totally for granted. Yeah. Couldn't fish without it, yet so few people do it's it. Weird, don't, they? don't think about it. It's just automatic. Dunk. Yeah. Yeah, you see so many people and you think, oh no, don't, don't do it, don't yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> but you got that within minutes, didn't you, really? Yeah. Once you've got that feel, it's, hard, it's just yeah. amazing what's transmitted back th through the rod. Dunk. That'll yeah. do. That's a bite. Yeah, it was, it it was so wicked, much. actually, watching watching Tom do it as well. For that, you could see the smile on his face when yeah. it went donk like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah! yeah, you know. And that, I think that on its own, that yeah. will catch you so many fish on its own without changing anything else. Oh, you you, know? Your heart automatically sort of goes whoa. Can yeah. you... Oh no! Next no, cash. Right. You get... Oh, that's almost cruel. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tom? Um, definitely the biggest things for me this week um, were my finesse and accuracy. Similar to with uh, the feather and the lead down, but it's everything to do with my spotting, my presentation. Just a whole lot confident with my fishing from now on. Just watching you, seeing how little things that you changed and added into your fishing, I was just like, run back over to my swim, right, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing right, this. Yeah, I'm yeah. so happy with it and so much more confident. I'm sitting in my bivvy in the evenings and at night, you're all tucked away, I'm sitting there absolutely completely awake, right. couldn't sleep for anything, but I'm so confident. <laughs> I'm like, Mate, you was asleep this morning, yeah. <laughs> and I caught that yeah. first fish you were asleep, I'm telling you. Do they have, uh, a few of alarms go off, I'm straight up and yeah. bang, bang twice with a net. Yeah, you can see that with your rigs actually, you start off with, there was a bit too much putty on there yeah. and it wasn't perfectly neat and the, the shrink tubing wasn't at quite the right angle. All things again that we've shown and shown and shown, yeah. but we perhaps forget to stress it as strongly perhaps as you need to, it's, you know, that they are important. It's neatness all the time with yeah. it. When you look at something, you know when it's right. Yeah. And it, that sounds a really odd thing yeah. to say, but you look at it, it doesn't look clumsy. Yeah. 
and it just looks so slimline and neat, and you think, yeah. That's going to go. Happy. Yeah, happy. That's going to go. Happy. Every time, even when you pull it in, you're like, I'm confident it was in the right place. It's more to do with the fish weren't there, or I, I'm just I'm doing the right stuff. It's just a massive, massive confidence That's the boost. key, mate, yeah. what yeah. you've yeah. just said, the fish weren't there. Yeah. Because most people change something yeah. thinking they've got that wrong, when most of the time they just weren't in the right spot. Yeah. So it sounds like you've got loads. We, I mean, we've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's no, been it's brilliant, been absolutely yeah, brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. And uh, I hope you keep in touch and, and keep sending the pictures through, mate. Loads of yeah, bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Big juicy dark mirrors is yeah. the, the way forward, I think. Nice one, nice one. Thanks a lot. Well, that's all we've got time for in this episode of Thinking Tackle. Thank you very much to Dave at Green Acres for letting us come on here well before it's going to open to the public. Check out the Angling Press for details of when you can actually fish here. Thanks to the guys for making it such a great trip, and we'll see you on the bank sometime. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dow Infinity.